This is Tommy Chong, man, and this is Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. It's Captain Hooter. Good morning, everyone. Captain Hooter here, just doing a little Saturday morning renovations here in the Hooterverse. I don't know if you can see some of the things I've changed in here, but we've made some really cool upgrades. We have now floating mushrooms that float around the room, in the mushroom room, and we have paintings that twist and turn and change colors. We have pictures that grow and shrink and move around. But I wanted to show you some really cool stuff that I have over here. Check this out. We just did a renovation in here in the art gallery. As I promised you, we were going to put in some new pictures, new paintings. So we've got some new work in here for you to check out. By the way, I don't know if I ever showed you this. This is one of my favorites right here. It's called the coronavirus. Cool, huh? Okay. Anyway, I wanted to show you, because you haven't seen this yet, this is the new virtual kitchen. This is what I've got all set up for us. We're going to be doing some amazing cooking in here soon. And you know what's even cooler? Check this out. The kitchen has a view of Amsterdam. A really cool one. <laughs> well, we have a great show today. We have Dr. Mary Clifton. Dr. Mary, I have to tell you, I have had the most amazing learning experience from that lady right there. And she has taught me so much. And I was involved in this, the Cannabinoid Protocol Coaching Program. And it is a fantastic program. And this lady has put together one of the most amazing databases of CBD and cannabis medical information. Oh, my God. This is going to be an incredible interview. So sit back and relax. Enjoy this interview. And we'll see you in just a few minutes. Hola, hola, everyone. Captain Hooter here coming to you once again, very high and very alive. And in the same a thread that I've been going on in the last two weeks, I have been bringing in people that are and have been uh, the most influential in contributing to my cannabis knowledge. And as you know, I had uh, Brandon Allen from the Tricom Institute. Uh, you've probably seen Jonathan Hirsch. You've had a chance to meet Brett Bogue and uh, Dana Larson, and of course, First Man. And I am delighted today to have a spectacular lady who has, uh, 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 over the last two years, has contributed more to my database in my head than probably anyone else. And uh, this is uh, Dr. Mary. Dr. Mary, how are you? I'm fantastic. What a great introduction. <laughs> it's great to oh, be on gracious. with you today, Dan. You know, uh, I first ran into you uh, from um, I believe it was uh, Mommy Jane uh, on Instagram, oh, sure. and you did an interview with her, I believe, on, on one of her Instagram shows where you were talking about it, and uh, immediately clicked in, and you were doing a, uh, a, an online certificate program that was called, and still is, called the uh, Cannabinoid Protocol. Yeah, and, uh, that's right. Yeah, and, and I, uh, I joined that class and uh, immediately went through it, and uh, I, I actually hammered through it. Um, I had a gap of time where I, that's all I did, and I went hardcore. I had piles of notes um, <laughs> and, 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 and went through the process, and I learned so much. 
Um, and I wanted, to, first of all, thank you face to face like this, because this is really cool for me. Thank you, because it, and here's the other thing. It's strange because to, to actually talking to you live, because I watch you just like your picture right here. I can yeah. see you just like I watched 10,000 videos, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you know? It's a very comprehensive system for training it. You know, it. Uh, I, I looked at all of the data that had been collected on each disease state, each condition, and then and then looked at all the research and, and boiled it all down and then created, you know, the long 40 minute videos and then broke the videos up into smaller pieces. It was a big job, but it's a it's a great system. I'm really, really pleased with it. And uh, it's trained a lot of people now. Absolutely. And and the mm -hmm. off online network also of, uh, of students has been phenomenal. Also great amount of information and see all where all your students have gone off to and all their different uh, uh, careers from uh, from your your class. That's got to be very. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people brought some really great, powerful uh, stuff with them. You know, we've got nurses and uh, nurse practitioners and we and a couple of doctors and a lot of people who just wanted to learn more. And then other people who, uh, you know, took it out and created careers with it as local coaches or working as a really well-informed bud tender and just been really phenomenal. It's been great. Yeah, I, I've had some wonderful conversations with uh, fellow students. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I can't emphasize enough the quality of the videos and how important that makes the whole package come together. Um, was that always the plan from the very beginning? Because I mean, you're a practicing doctor. You're you could do a lot of different things here. You've invested a tremendous amount of time and effort into the this video, this database that you have. Just that one aspect of it, not to mention yeah. the books and everything. Well, but I felt like everybody really needs this. Every it, nobody thinks that there's any good research. There's no good research. We need better research on cannabis, or we need to, you know, we everybody worries about the safety, and I think the worries are really largely on founded. So I wanted to, uh, you know, create a, a group of videos where people who wanted to learn could learn and, uh, and then share that data. Because I always think things change when it's neighbor to neighbor, you know, people, people working in their communities. So having, you know, hundreds or thousands of people that take this and then take this data and, and just correct all of the untruths they hear in their own community. And then also make it get a chance to make some money, you know, to have to have the uh, products that are available for the coaches to sell to the people that they're working with. And the coaches have um, a great opportunity there too. So what triggered you to do this in the first place? I mean, honestly, <laughs> you, you had a clear path. You're in New York City. I mean, you could just, you know, roll. Yeah, I mean, I did. I ran a private practice for 14 years and then I went into the hospital and uh, had a lot of fun in the hospital, but the hospital has some a lot of tragedy in it. You know, there's a lot of people in there that come to the hospital to die or they have a, a really bad infection and they didn't really, you know, a lot of people just get ripped off. You know, taking care of people in the hospital is very painful to do because uh, there's just it's 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 not fair, you know, how disease gets distributed in our society or in any in any situation. Just a lot of people are at their lowest point in their life and it takes a lot of energy. So I just, uh, I started to think, and but actually what really drove me was witnessing so many deaths over my career. And, um, and I witnessed a few people who were close to me who died with cannabis in place and had really smooth transitions compared to people who didn't. And I was like, gosh, it really seems like that drug works. So I started to read about it, you know, to see if I could get any benefit uh, from, for other patients. I mean, I've smoked my body weight back when I was a kid. I, you know, in high school, I was up in Northern Michigan, you know, we were a, a religious family. I didn't have any, any uh, opportunity to go talk to a doctor about anxiety or stress or depression. I was, you know, just, you were just supposed to deal with it. And, um, and I, I felt really anxious a lot of the time. And the only time I really felt normal was when I was using. And so, you know, that was, uh, that went on for years that way. Until, you know, I just developed some other uh, skills and tools, but, uh, but so I knew it was 
powerful drug. Um, and I also knew about the side effects because I used to have a ton of paranoia. And then, uh, and then anyway, yeah, once I started reading about it, I was like, my gosh, there's a ton of research. And everybody think everybody keeps up with this. There's no research. We don't have any data. So I decided to lead uh, the charge in getting the data out there. You know, and that's the thing that I, I, I love more than anything else about the whole package here is the amount of research that you did. It's the same thing that I love about the Tricom Institute, the amount of continuing research that they continue to do. And, and you're on top of it. So you've got the latest information. And that is so crucial, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's it is. It is. And I think you really just have to define what you want to do within the industry, too. I mean, the more that I started to read and research and then look at what the big MSOs and dispos are doing, I decided that it was really my job to protect home grow and protect the disabled and and approach this as a strain specific thing, because I think if if we leave it to uh, to big, big weed, they're going to just uh, dilute it down to THC to CBD ratios, terpene profiles, and you're just going to be taking all of those parts and assembling them. So my focus has really been on strain specifics and strains that are specific for various conditions, you know, rather than trying to think about this as like a 10 milligram gummy versus a 25 milligram gummy. That, that's the wrong way for the industry to go. Right. You know, what's interesting is that uh, recently, in the last six months, I've had five or six different people who have come to me that have had cancer. And the first words out of their mouth are, tell me about Rick Simpson oil. Mm -hmm. Can wow. I hear your, yeah, okay, so can you tell me what your opinion is of, of Rick Simpson oil and how yeah, it should yeah. be used? Thanks for reminding me about that. I actually have some video to shoot around Rick Simpson oil because I, I worked on a series of videos, a series of educational videos that I'll be launching soon on how to make your own Rick Simpson oil. Right, so, right. Uh, so this is a, so Rick Simpson oil is just an extremely powerful oil. It's a, uh, you take a, a mess of cannabis or a mess of, you know, see hemp that if you want to make a CBD extraction, but usually Rick Simpson oil is made from cannabis and you just, you, you do a, a very high high concentration alcohol, like an Everclear, but there are sources that provide that alcohol for less money and, uh, and, uh, and, and are, are, you know, will help to keep the process much more doable for the individual. So I'm going to share those sources with that interview, but you, so you, and then you just uh, let it sort of cook, if you will, and the alcohol extracts the cannabinoids from the plant. And then, uh, and then you, you know, uh, take that, what solvent off and then and then cook the alcohol off. So there's a few times because you're operating with a very high you know concentration of alcohol that the product can be pretty flammable. So you just have to be very cautious with how you're using it. But it really is not out of range for anybody to do it at home as long as you can get access to enough uh, cannabis to make it. But then you get all of the all of the products out of the cannabis, all of that rich THC, CBD, CBN, CBG, all of the terpenes that uh, that you concentrate down, and then uh, and then you uh, you know fill syringes and and take it a bit at a time. Very potent. I mean, I have a cousin who is surviving uh, lung cancer. He's six years survival now, and they gave him a six month uh, timeline with his cancer but he uses Rick Simpson oil every day. And his wife was like, I'm going to try it. And she, she took the tiniest little taste and she was in bed for three days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, very it's, powerful. It is powerful medicine. You know, I, I had on uh, Jonathan Hirsch, who is uh, working for um, a company up in Canada, uh, Avana, I believe it is. And uh, they just released Rick Simpson oil in a, a droppable dispenser that you turn like this, and it's a pen, and you can just do yeah. drops at a time. And uh, yeah, I've had a little bit of experience with the Rick Simpson oil in, in a couple of different ways. I met Rick Simpson uh, in Amsterdam. You did. I met wow. him, and uh, I had a, an interesting conversation with him. He was there uh, talking to Renus, who is one of the gentlemen I just interviewed. He's the mm -hmm. one that's been making the medical uh, medicinal cannabis oil in Amsterdam against the law. And uh, he had Rick Simpson had come in. I thought he was, he was collaborating with Rick Simpson, but he wasn't. Rick's was coming there to collaborate with him. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a chance to talk to him. And I had had two people that I knew who had used his, his uh, medicine, but only as a topical, only as a, like a salve. And uh, one person had some skin cancer on his arm and on his mm-hmm. head. And he used Rick Simpson oil and it disappeared. And that's the, all he will, and he can, he'll show He shows it to you every time you meet him. Oh, see, this is where I used to have the skin cancer right here. And the Rick Simpson oil took that off. And uh, the other person that I knew was somebody who did have some cancer and was dying and, and took it in a very uh, strategic way where he was taking, I'm, I'm going to be off on these numbers, but I'm going to guess it was somewhere between seven, seven grams of oil that seems like a lot, three grams of oil a day. And he took three grams of oil a day for mm-hmm. two weeks until his body acclimated to that. And all he did was get up, uh, eat something, go back to sleep. I and bet. he did that for, right? Um, and he swore that he, you know, his remission of cancer was due to taking that oil. That's so and wonderful. I mean, so I had a story over and over again. I mean, I don't make any claims as to what that concentrate can do, but a lot of people make a lot of claims. Well, and he does too. And that was what I was going to get to is I'm sitting there telling him in front of him, I said, well, that, and, and it was, it was like, I told him something he had heard a trillion times and he was like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know that. And, and it cures, it cures this. And it's, and he went through a, a whole litany of things that it cured. And, um, <laughs> and it and it's it, it's interesting but it's a uh, what i i'm most interested in with the rick simpson oil is the fact that people seem to now be taking it on a daily basis and taking it almost like a one a day vitamin yeah and and it, almost as a preventative thing so i can't wait to see oh. your series on this because i you know this is this is like the 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 cutting edge information now Yeah, it really is. It's exciting to be, I mean, people are always asking me about RSO. What is it? What does it do? But a lot of people use it to manage really severe autoimmune conditions or to manage uh, cancer. There's, there's a lot of different indications for it, or at least where people perceive that to be valuable to them. And, uh, and, and uh, it's, it seems to be a pretty powerful product. I mean, it must be because that's all we ever do in the pharmaceutical industry is find a very powerful plant. And then we, you know, concentrate the, uh, the, the most powerful portions of the plant. So that Rick Simpson oil is basically like pharmaceutical weed. If you're following a uh, pharmaceutical sort of program on how we make drugs. So, uh, you know, within the Western medicine model, like Pfizer and Eli Lilly, that's, you know, that's that like Valium is just, you know, concentrated valerian root. Um, and there's a million examples like that. You see the, the concentrates becoming really the, the focus of the medical aspect of it eventually? There's so much pressure to not provide concentrates or to limit concentrates. Uh, You know, there's a lot of pressure from the prohibitionists that concentrates really don't have a presence medically. And, uh, and people worry that if teens get into them that they can develop addictions because the THC levels are so unnaturally high. Uh, I don't think that we have actual proof of any of that, that there's a higher level of addiction or there's a higher level of psychosis, but there's those concerns that they state so that you can keep the THC levels lower. And then with lower THC levels, people have to buy more. So, you know, from a, from a business perspective, I think it's going to be really hard to convince anybody to, um, to make concentrates a, uh, you know, the, the center of attention. I think they're still going to. Yeah, and, and, uh, unless they can come up with a more efficient distribution channel, right? Other than having to do the dabs and with the, the torches, although they're getting better with, with some of the, uh, Jonathan and I were just talking about this on the last show. One of the mm-hmm. interesting things he talked about, and he's done this in live debate also, is he thinks that, that grandma should be dabbing. <laughs> if, we're gonna, if we're gonna be dabbing, granny should be dabbing because it is uh, 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 no, uh, co- no uh, particulates. It's low heat. Uh, you can uh, you can actually dose it properly. So it's, and that's the only form of this that we can do where you, we can specify the dose. Right, uh-huh. ten milligrams for grandma just before she goes to bed. 
some people might really like that very consistent dosing too. I mean, the thing that I love about cannabis is that you can take as much as you need. And if you don't need any, don't take any. Or if you need more, take more on a particularly rough day, but you don't have to be obliged to take your 10 milligrams every single night or else you're gonna have tremors or withdrawal symptoms or you know, just not be able to fall asleep. I mean, so I, I love that about cannabis, but for a lot of people, they, they are really used to a model where the pharmacist or the doctor tells them how much to take and then they you know they don't they don't really adjust their own medicine so it, that's a special trick to move somebody out of that western model where somebody else is in control of your dosage so i do kind of like the idea of a controlled dosage sure how much do you think big pharma is stopping our legalization in in the states and oh, in particular I mean, for, for some indications Dan, I think that like, you know, for sleep, for probably 80% of pain, for, uh, for you know, 80% of anxiety, cannabis should be the first line therapy. Yeah. That and that's going to, but you know, I think that that's a very dangerous thing to say, and a lot of people don't want to hear that at all. So there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's going to be very disruptive as people, more and more people use it and find that they really don't need all of the other medicines that they were taking before. So, yeah. um, so the pharma industry is definitely not wanting to get on board, but also, you know, uh, uh, you, you drop beer sales, you have less of a drop, but also a drop in hard liquor sales when you get legalized. So, you know, the, the alcohol industry is going to try to protect as long as they can too. And all of these people have big pockets. And, you know, we've all been taught all of our lives, follow the money, follow the money, follow the money. And, yep. you know, this, they're going to spend this. That's why it, because everybody asks me, how come it's not legal yet? How come it's not legal yet? There's a reason why it's not legal yet. There's a reason. And it's, it's green. It's a ridiculous batch of reasons. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of individuals making money. I think what we have to do is really, uh, you know, they want a balanced budget, but they can also make money on cannabis. I mean, if we get consumption lounges and, and licensing and stuff together in these people's states, we can, you know, if they're, if, if they're individually making money, I think the way to get politicians on board is to get them to invest in cannabis. Yeah. And then they're going to want it to go. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, they, it's they like, have to individually want it because they don't represent the people they represent themselves. Yeah, we've brought it up a couple of times in Canada, you know, which already went through their legalization process. And in, in during that process, there's a, a, a wonderful lady um, uh, who uh, Jody Emery, who has a Twitter account up there, Mark Emery's uh, ex-wife. And she documented all of the politicians and police and everyone who ended up with in positions at another company or ended up, you know, taking advantage before the legalization or as soon as the legalization happened, then they switched sides, you know, and it was over there. And Interesting. Uh, I would love to see that list. Yeah. Well, I yeah. love what happened in New York because what they did, what they did in your state there was one of the coolest things taking all the convicts, right? How is that working so far? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's really been thoroughly fleshed out. I mean, I know that they're working on it and there, there's some big projects going on in the Bronx, but mm -hmm. I don't know that I have like a great success story to tell you, to show you or share with you, you know? Yeah. I think, I mean, everything just takes so long to get from the thought process to the actual implementation, you know, right. but I do think New York is really trying to have equity and they're trying to keep people who have been in the industry. You know, it's always like people say, how long have you been in the industry? And the code for that is, are you legacy or are you legal? You know, if you've only been here for seven or eight years, you're probably just legal market. But when people yeah. are in for 20 or 30 years, but the reality is, you know, you think of the whole market as this, um, as, as legal over here and legacy over here, but actually right. everything is blurred all the time. If you can't right. sell to the legal market, you end up selling the legacy, or if you have more than you need for legal, you're running some legacy out the back door. It's a, it's very much a, I mean, if you're in the industry, you have to recognize that that's happening. Well, and also the industry is evolving at such a tremendous pace and the new science and new technology. And um, we were just talking about uh, the, the discovery of a THCP, 
Um, yes. And uh, can, for, for those of you that don't know, can, can you explain a little bit more about oh, this? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, everybody's familiar with THCB or THC, THC, right? Yeah. Delta 9 THC. It's the, it's the molecule that gets you high. It's found in uh, cannabis. But then uh, it, it, now what we've been able to do uh, with just, I mean, and these are actually old scientific, uh, old scientific experiments from the 1970s where people took hemp, you know, um, CBD concentrated cannabis plants that primarily generate CBD and then uh, take that CBD oil and uh, mix it with a strong acid or apply some heat. And you're able to flip the bonds so that you can create a product that gets you high, just like THC, but it's coming from the hemp plant. So in that way, it's legal weed. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a cannabis product that gets you high, but it's available basically in all 50 states except for a few states who have outlawed it. Uh, but really the, the number of states it's not allowed in is very small. It's really pretty widely available. And I haven't asked you anything about this, but do you know anything about the, and I think it, they're, they're calling it nanotech, it's a nanotechnology where they're able yeah. to use into the water molecules. Can you tell us yeah. more about that? The nanotech Technology is just supposed to encapsulate these uh, these little uh, uh, the cannabinoids so that they become water soluble or so that they become easier to distribute in a solution. And uh, I think nano encapsulation is interesting. I'm not sure that I would go after it as a as anything that's uh, I, I, anything particularly new or innovative at this point. A lot of people are doing nano encapsulation, and then you know the other the other problem when you're distributing in a drink is that you know unless there's some fat in the drink, this is a fat soluble product. So it really it likes to be in like a pina colada, but it really doesn't like to be in a uh, in a dry martini. You know it's gonna it's going to, it's going to clump. So even with nano encapsulation, you might get a few months where the product is distributed evenly across the drink, but then after that, you're, it's going to start to clump. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's a, another angle that, uh, uh, so the, the, the whole homogenization of that doesn't really work in a lot yeah. of different areas. Ah, yeah. So oh. if you get a THC drink and you're like, oh, I'm going to save this for a really special event. Don't do that. Don't do that because you're going to be, you know, you're going to take it out four or five months later. And I don't think you're going to enjoy it as much. So those drinks are really meant to be consumed pretty quickly. But the, the THCV, THCP, THCO, HHC, D8, D10, all really, really fun products to explore. And they, they might have different, uh, they almost certainly have different medicinal properties. They almost certainly have different addiction potentials. You know, we just don't know a lot about them, but we're learning a lot because people are posting on Reddit pages, they're posting on Facebook pages. So we get to like really look at several thousand different administrations and see what people are experiencing. And, uh, and, and what we can probably say at this point is that D8 is like a weed light. You know, if you, if you're, I mean, it's a, I think D8 is a great product for your grandma or for somebody who's really anxious about using cannabis because they've gotten really high in the past D8, such a smooth high. And then HHC and THCO are a bit more potent and a bit more stimulating. So D8, if you wanted to make D8 in the old fashioned way, that's just making hash. It's, you know, putting, getting the weed ready and then fermenting it and, and you can make D8, but it takes a long time. So using this chemical process, you can do it much more quickly. But the HHC, the THCO, THCP are all going to come in with much more of a psychedelic, stimulating, activating high. And they're, and they're, I like them because they're very potent. So if you have somebody who's having to dab or somebody who's having to inhale, you know, six, eight, 10 inhalations to get to their medicinal dose, you can try one of those products and they may only need just one puff or two in order to, you know, really, really push it. What's your favorite that you've tried? Well, I mean, in terms of how my patients are responding to it, I think the HHC is a nice replacement. The THCO is uh, really psychedelic and a lot of people will describe a significant time dilation and, uh, and like place 
uh, diet, you know, like how some how sometimes you feel a bit disoriented and not as uh, not as like tuned into your surroundings. People have described that with THCO. So, but I have patients who have shown up with you know chronic insomnia, chronic ADHD. They've been on these medicines forever. They've been on cannabis forever. I haven't even mentioned DA to them, and they come to me and say. I, I'm not going to do anything but D8 from here on in for my ADHD. It just works so much better. I quit smoking cannabis and I'm just using D8, which is like, wow, that's amazing. So people are finding it themselves and adding it in. So it, it, so D, D8 is fine. Some people do complain about a headache though, you know, with that. So it's just worth uh, paying attention to. I mean, everybody has little reactions, but there does seem to be a thread of headache associated with D8. What about the, the, you were talking about the THCO and I've seen it in, in a concentrate format. I've seen it in a, a distillate. I, I think it's how it was sold. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, where are people finding this if they wanted to find it? How, is it is it something that's now being sold at, at, at shops or at- Oh yeah, I think you could find it at a lot of head shops. I don't think it's as easy to find as the D8, but I think it'll probably be a big part of the next major wave of hemp derived concentrates that you see, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great little product. And like I said, it's so potent, you know? So you don't have to really, uh, you don't have to smoke a lot. And, uh, and, and that's always great. I mean, I, as much as I, 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 I like inhalation, I think, you know, inhaling is such a great mode of administration because you get such an instantaneous response. So if you've got panic disorder or headache, inhalation is perfect. But a lot of people just like to smoke. They don't really want to take a gummy. And having uh, a, so, so having somebody who likes to smoke or somebody who needs a, an instant result from smoking, the THCO is going to be really nice for them. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we were talking about, you mentioned gummies um, and edibles, and we talked about the, the liquids. Um, those are the ones that scare me, to be honest with you. The, the, and the only time I've ever hurt myself or, or come close to hurting myself, and I just talked about this, I was drinking a, an iced tea. It was a half and half iced tea. And it said uh -huh. uh, the, the, in small print, just drink a half a cap full. And it just seemed silly to me that you would only drink a half a capful would be a dose. So uh -huh. I took a, a shot, you know, a full, probably about two or three capfuls that couldn't hurt anybody. I can't remember the last time I was that hammered. I mean, I was, uh -huh. I had to take a knee. I started losing my balance and I was going, this has never happened to me when I was in the Navy drinking, you know, shots of things. This is crazy how that can affect you. It's so yeah important that you understand the dosing, right? Um, oh, I mean, the edibles are so dangerous. They're, they're dangerous because they, the packaging is not well marked and they're, and, and, uh, and people are not differentiating their edibles and, and, and they're putting them in places where the kids can get into them. So they're really, there has to be a lot of people have to be responsible. And I think it's very simple. I think we can do some really simple things to make it, uh, to make edibles better. But I know everybody just wants to take a tiny sliver of chocolate rather than eat a whole container of cookies. Most people just want to have one bite and not, you know, carb load on it before they, but I, I know it's, a, and I just, I talked to somebody recently who makes a lot of her own brownies and baked goods. And she says she uses green sprinkles and that's the code in the house. So if there's green sprinkles on it, you know, on the top of the baked good, then it's hers. It's not, it's not for anybody else. So I, I mean, I think you can implement simple things like that. Or if you're bringing candy in, that is a, that really is similar to other candy packaging. You just have to put it somewhere else. And then, yeah, take your time with it because like the, um, those, those overdosed edible experiences are not fun. No, no, it, and it's, it's, uh, and, and you're right, the packaging in, in a lot of the cases are just, it, they got to change that. Uh, the last ones I saw were Cheetos, a bag of Cheetos, and the dosage was three Cheetos, and, and it looked just like a Cheetos bag. 
Except the, yeah. the, the tiger was, he looked a little bit more stone than normal. <laughs> yeah, and there's Doritos like that. It's ridiculous. And, you know, I think I, I'm just bummed that the industry with all of the creativity and brilliance and, and, and how magnificent this plant is that people can't just be a little more creative on their packaging. You know, it's, it's embarrassing that we have, we lack so much creativity that the package says Cheetos, but it's not Cheetos. And it would be easy for somebody to make a mistake. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, I'm going to, I'm going to wave a magic wand over you and poof, you're now the surgeon general of the United States. <laughs> wow. That would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Cool. Huh? Yeah. What mm -hmm. would you do? What would be the first couple of things you do? Uh, I mean, I think that one thing we really need to focus on in the U.S. is, is implementing socialized medicine on a, on a really big scale. There's, a, there's, there's so many minor and major injustices every single day for people not being able to, um, you know, change their job because, they, because they, they have a great new job opportunity, but they'll be out of insurance for you know, 60 days and they have a kid with diabetes and they can't do that. There's just um, so many, uh, so many times that the, the way that our health insurance is designed and the cost and the potential for somebody to be able to go bankrupt when they get sick is, uh, is, is sickening really. It's disgusting that that's yeah. the way our country runs. So, so I think that would be priority number one. But I mean, cutting costs is so simple with implementation of, you know, legalization of cannabis. So we can, you know, reduce costs in, in every room, in, but in pain, anxiety, sleep, where a lot of people have a prescription every single day. We can, we can impact uh, metabolic health with cannabis. Um, and and the the other thing I would do, which would have incredible long reaching, uh, very complex side effects, would be to end the corn subsidy for farmers, and uh, and that oh. would increase the cost of you know factory farmed meat, which is the source of of heart disease and cancer is in, in terrible fats and a ton of obesity, you know, would up the cost of your roast by five to 10 times and up the cost of soda pop by five or 10 times. And, uh, and just cr create a situation where if you wanted to have a special treat of a Mountain Dew, you could have that like on a Sunday, you know, when you go to the movies as a special experience, but it wouldn't be something you would drink four or five a day, you know, no one would be able to afford it. And then people would eat healthy, nourishing food because that's what is cost effective. We've really designed a food system that is such a mess and so um so really completely antithetical to human health well and speaking of human health there was a big report that was out this week it was it stanford i think it was stanford said that uh, uh regular consistent marijuana smokers have a higher heart attack risk before the age of 50 years old do yeah. you see that one yeah, there's a lot, there's, there's, you know, there's just so much to unpack with those studies and it really is impossible. It's really impossible to separate out exactly why somebody is using cannabis and how much chronic stress they're under and chronic anxiety that has led them to cannabis. You know, none of these studies ever take uh, a, a 30,000 15 year olds and put, you know, 15,000 of them into smoking weed three times a day and 15,000 of them into not and then following them over 50 years. So you just have to recognize that these studies that pull out the weed people and then say that people who are using weed have these problems, they're going to have bias because there's going to be all of the other reasons why people went to weed in the first place. Uh, it may have been an addictive personality, but in a lot of cases, it's somebody who is self-treating. A lot of these teens are self-treating treating and they don't have support at home and and that extends over your whole lifetime and and then I would expect that population to have more heart attacks probably more cancers probably just more socioeconomic problems in general 
So I, I, but it's such a, it's such a long discussion, but what we do know when we look at population-based data of mild to moderate users, and you know this as well as I do, because it's in, it's in the, it's in my uh, cannabinoid yeah. protocol, you know, people who use weed over their lifetime have smaller uh, uh, waist, better waist to hip ratios, you know, lower insulin resistance, lower blood sugars, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, lower triglycerides. Um, they, they stay slimmer over their lifetime uh so the so the whole idea of munchies and everybody using cannabis just being uh, overweight is really just not not supported in the literature at all right and also i think uh, smokers are becoming more educated and as they become more educated they realize what they're smoking and the time of day that they're smoking it and uh they construct you know i i smoke five different types of bud a day and that's normally how i structure it from my narrow leaf to my broad leaf and wow. start in the morning and i use uh, i use sneakatokes i don't know if you can see that wait let's see oh, oh, there wait there oh, yeah there i see it okay so so that's a sneakatoke that's what i smoke with uh, so I'm microdosing, right? I microdose, mm -hmm. and I'll take one one hit of this in the morning uh, with a cup of coffee. I'm gone for two hours, and I'm off to the races, right? Good and then you. by the time you know, you know well, it, you've got to know how your bud works, and the more you learn about how that how to use it as a medicine and use it as a tool for yourself the mm -hmm. better you're going to be in the long run. What is your favorite? Now you've been using and talking about specific cultivars for specific issues and um i i was i was curious what i forgot the one was it ghost i think it was ghost yeah that you just, just said ghost. Hey, well just today i posted on chem dog so i'm, I'm going to try to get back to posting a strain every day it just uh, i got busy with a bunch of cannabis news and then i heard some cool sounds on tiktok so i haven't been posting every day i love your tiktoks by the way you oh you, thank you're, you i love making my tiktoks okay well and you can tell you know, when somebody's enjoying and having a good time with it, and you have been, and it's it comes across. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, yeah, I mean, I, there's so many great strains, but I have to say, some of these really great strains with a heavy head, a cerebral, a really good cerebral high, and a body high, because there's so many people dealing with some body aches and pains, and some you know anxiety or stress or depression that that combination of a good head high and a good body eye is so nice chem dog's a great product but i mean the more modern products that you can find really readily the gelato girl scout cookie is going to come in like that there was just a recent study that i am interested in that i haven't unpacked yet about high high thc low cbd products not being nourishing for the brain like the like the higher cbd products right. So I am curious about that study with some of these higher THC products, but the medicinal th high THC products that come in with a uh, with a really good um, uh, uh, head head and body buzzes are the ones I like, and and gelato I think is one of my favorites. So many people love it. I mean, Just you know, so. they're they're just great all around strains for a reason because yeah. they they work for everybody. Yeah. And and the terpenes, the taste and the smell is crucially important. Um, and I, I know that, and it's funny because often I talk to so many of my bud tender friends and one of the, the regular uh, starting lines for people coming into the place is, what is your strongest weed? <laughs> yeah. Right? So Everybody that's what they say. THC, THC, THC. Yeah. What's your strongest weed? Which think about it. How many times have you ever walked into a bar and walked in and said, what's your strongest alcohol? <laughs> yeah, you don't so right <laughs> Never, yeah. no. so so it's 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 fascinating also that i like for me i think the strongest uh flower that i ever smoked was 36 it was either 36 or 37 35 36 i think 36 percent thc yeah i didn't care for it you didn't like it didn't care for it didn't it wasn't it wasn't you know i was like wow okay well but it, the nose was no, you know, it didn't taste well. I didn't. So, you know, I'm a yeah. great blue dream or hand me a legitimate uh, a bud of Jack uh, mm -hmm. and I'm over the oh, moon. Yeah, those are such good buds. Both of those are really, yeah. really strong strains. I think, I think a lot of time, I think you have to be very honest about how it smells to you and how, how the aroma works for you, because I think, uh, 
it, I mean, to some degree, you're you're um, you're inclined towards stuff that is uh, that that your body needs. And so, if you come across a, a particular strain and that smell just uh, resonates with you, you really feel that product. Then that's probably a good product for you. If you smell it and it smells nasty, you're going to have a hard time, you know, consuming that product because it's it's uh, it, the that nasty smell is gonna is just not going to interface well with your body. And um, I, I don't know if we can say that's entirely true with food, also because so much of our our food is so crazy and artificial, but, um, you know, eating, eating real whole food, you can, you can definitely smell a difference between certain things that suit your body and certain things that don't. So I would really trust that aroma. And if you love the way that bud smells, you know, and you break it up and it's not too dry and it's, and there's, and it's not obviously not too wet, you know, you know, it's going to be a good roll. Then that's one that you should, uh, that's one you should, you know, try and invest in. Absolutely. Have you uh, have you done vape pens? Do you know uh, like a Dynavap or any of those? Have you tried any that you found that you that you like or? I'm familiar with all the vape pens, you know, and there's a, I mean, gosh, I feel like for every single brand that is out there, they have a slightly different vape pen, you know, um, there's it. So I'm, it, I think that getting, uh, I mean, I, I hate the disposableness of the vapes and the, you know, the has, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of trash that's, uh, that's generated. And I also think when you're using a disposable vape, you're dealing with a lot of plastic and there's the cadmium, you know, there's not trying to give you an expensive product. So I much prefer a uh, non-disposable vape that where you get new cartridges, but better yet, I really think like the dry, the dry herb vapes where you pack a little oven, like the packs or the volcanoes mm -hmm. where you, where you pack your product into a little oven and, and superheat it. Basically you're toasting the, the weed so that you release the cannabinoids and the terpenes, but you don't, you don't, you know, you cut your carcinogens into 10 10% of what you get when you burn compared to vaping. So a dry herb vape is, is the most uh, healthy thing, but it does change the flavor. I agree. Is there, is there any product, is there any combination of the CBDs and, you know, because I have a lot of friends that just dismiss CBD completely. And it's just, uh, it's garbage and it's out of their head. And I can't, I, I can't get it into their head. Um, can you tell us uh, the combination? How, how would you address my friend who just says, this is garbage? Yeah, that's a really, I haven't figured out how to talk to that person about CBD because they've decided that <laughs> cold, CBD cold. doesn't get them high. So they just want to focus on the THC, but, but the THC high by itself is not neuroprotective and it could be neurodamaging. So it really is important if you're using high THC to back it up with, with a CBD administration first thing in the morning or something. But I think that people who are using all day long are, are and if they take some some CBD, it blocks some of their receptors because CBD is such a receptor hog. So if you're taking CBD, you're going to end up blocking some of the THC response and people who want that high THC. So it gets in their way. But I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's really important to to get some CBD in there at some point during the day if you don't instantly wake and bake every day, or try to get a little CBD in that morning in that morning administration. Going with the high THC products all day long every day is I think uh, has the potential to do some harm for your noggin. Absolutely. I mean, not uh -oh. absolutely. We don't know for sure, but. Uh, it's too late for me, kids. Don't worry about me. Turn around and leave without me. It's too late. Too late for me now. I'm done. I, you know, you you were talking about the CBDs and the the receptor blockers. Um, well, how long ago was it? Several months, four months ago, that there was that report that came out that said that uh, CBD smoking CBD could be a preventative measure to prevent you from getting the COVID. And yeah. right after that, yeah, and right after that, here in Portugal, I had two of the cannabis shops here uh, were selling pre-roll uh, COVID killers. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think there probably is some immune modulation and the other and the nice thing is, is that if you're inhaling it, you're putting it right on the lung tissue where the COVID goes. So hopefully you're reducing the and I mean, the whole thing with COVID is this is this super amped up immune response, right? I mean, you get the infection in the lung, and then the body responds to it by creating a little mucus, which usually creates a little pneumonia and you cough it up and you're better in three to six months. But the cytokine the storm. <laughs> yeah, right. The cytokine storm. Everybody has learned so much about the immune system. It's really fun to talk about it now compared to two years ago with people. Oh, yeah. But the cytokine storm, yeah, creates this massive mucus production and, you know, vas vasoconstriction and bronchoconstriction. People get really sick. They, their oxygen level drops. So by using cannabis and, and positioning it right in the lung, you sort of protect from that really reactive immune response. And we do and you, think that there's a protective effect. Yeah, no doubt. And and so does every Rastafarian in Jamaica. Uh, when I had, I, I don't know if you saw the, the, I asked him, I said, anybody got a jab in there and drinking? No, man, no, 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 no. This is a medicine, take care yeah. of it. Man. Well, yeah. I still think that we are blessed. We truly are blessed to be able to have an immunization in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. It's, uh, it's a serious infection and people still die from it. And uh, it's um, it, it's it's important to protect yourself in every way that you can. So the and the immunization is safe and uh, and and is great to have. So that at least if you get sick, you don't have to worry that you're going to you know pay the ultimate sacrifice. It's terrible. Yeah, absolutely. We were getting to the combinations because I've because uh, this I have I have two friends that are doing different things. And I know that everybody's doing something different, but I mean, have you seen anything that that is like, well, the if you do the 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 CBD uh, 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 THCO combination, uh, then later uh, finishing it off with a, you can inhaling THC, then then you're you know, have you seen any like what you would call the the blueprint or something that would be the best for someone to start with or or. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I think it's so individualized. That's where you really need to work with a coach like yourself and think yeah. about, like you say, like I have five flowers I do every day. That's so cool. Uh, but but if you're getting started, you know, the 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 goodies are the goodies for a reason. The Girl Scout cookie and wedding cake and uh, and gelato and sunset sherbet might be in there. Um, you know, there's just some of those some of those strains that virtually every dispensary in the country has and 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 they're there for a reason because people just love them they they uh they hit really nicely and they they're easy to titrate up and down and they're well tolerated and they're and they're, they're just they're they're just great buds you know and then when you start to get into it i mean i was out in vegas working with a development team out there and there there are some amazing products coming on board that are that are super medicinal very powerful uh a very powerful uh, buds. And um, I, I love all these new strains. I can't believe how many great new strains there are, but there, there's, a, there's a gajillion of them. And we're, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to find one of them in these or a half a dozen of them that are going to be absolutely remarkable for so many people. And then oh, yeah. the other thing we need to do is defend home grow. We need to make sure that once we figure mm. out these, these buds, that we make sure that people have the ability to grow their own medicine. And, uh, you know, it, it really, I mean, every, every state starts with a strong home grow or they don't, but it, when they start with a strong home grow, they start chipping away at it right away, you know, and Michigan's in the process of doing that right now is trying to say that if you're going to grow, you have to live in an industrial park, which is like, nobody lives uh, in an industrial park and they're, they just all kinds that start out with 12 plants. Now you can only have four, but only two can be flowering at one time. It's really, uh, I know it's something else. <laughs> <laughs> Every there you're, you just always have to be worried when you're growing and we shouldn't have people in that place. My goodness. Well, I, I was going to say the idea well, about distributing seeds and, and just having everybody have a handful of seeds next 420 that they just 
Thoreau, wherever, in Central Park, in the woods, in Northern Michigan, in mm -hmm. all over, so that it just is everywhere. Okay, so I have just a person you need to connect with. His name is Dana Larson. Uh, I interviewed him three shows ago, and he's already done this, and he's given away 10 million seeds so far. Wow. Look 10 million. That's so many seeds. Yes, that's crazy, right? So, uh -huh. uh, and, and he just opened up the first um, microdose magic mushroom storefront in Vancouver, Canada. Um, wow. And, right, and you can buy in his shop microdose. You can buy up to uh, three, uh, I think you can buy whatever you want, but they have dried uh, mushrooms, uh, full size mushrooms that you can get grams at a time. He's selling coca plants and selling coca tea. Wow. How about that? Yeah. He's going, and 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 I would I would say that uh, based on uh, two other people that I now have spoken with, who have been drinking the tea, it reminds me of Adderall. I would say coca tea is probably because that's where cocaine comes from. But if you're using just the leaves in a tea, that it, it would be very stimulating without being like dangerous, like cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's exactly what I would call it. This is natural Adderall. I've had some, a couple of people that I've known, you know, for a long time and they're now, wow. Okay. Fantastic. I'm wow. ready to go. Yes, I, mean, I, can't, I do all I'd like kinds to try of medicinal teas all day long. You know, I, I use all kinds of different herbs and just trying to really push on those. I mean, I, th this is a, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can see it. Yeah, okay. I always have, I always have some sort of medicinal tea uh, nearby. I mean, even if it's just a regular like spearmint, peppermint, rosemary kind of thing where you're just, I, I that you're, you're always going to increase your antioxidants and you know, it helps to prevent cancer, it, just okay. sipping it all day long, as opposed to sipping something horrible, like a Mountain Dew, but, you know, or just something really basically healthy, like a pure water, but. Right. And it, you're completely vegetarian, right? I was mostly? vegan. I was vegan for eight years. I was mm -hmm. raw vegan for about two years. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, I love to eat meat and I love to eat a little dairy now and then, but I avoid it. But, but I mean, I, I bet you a couple times a week, I'm getting into something and I, I like that life a lot better than being really super strict with your diet. It's hard. It's sure. not fun to be super strict. It's a, it's, um, yeah, that's a tough situation to put yourself in. Well, I will advise you to watch one of my other shows. I had a, a chef Jordan Wagman who cooks all natural with uh, no dairy and no, I mean, he's, he's as clean as a whistle. And uh, he is very, he, he's cooking with all these wonderful terpenes and adding uh, cannabinoids left, right, and center. And uh, uh, he's fun. He's, you're, I think you will get along beautifully with, uh, with Chef. Um, I love these guys that do infused foods. It's great. Oh, it, 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 and, and, you know, the, the thing that's so interesting about it is, is how um, careful everyone is being especially like just what you uh, said just a little while ago this is the the scary area here where you know and both of so far both of the chefs that i've had come on have been so dead on with you know this is how we're going to dose this and this is mm -hmm. you know and how to homogenize things so that you're not just taking a sip of the hot chocolate and getting all of the thc in the first sip off the top right uh yeah that's true too that's another issue <laughs> exactly you know I you have I'm, oh, I, I'm wondering on. if uh, if the best way to do uh infusions like for big dinners is going to be to have like three different fats and uh and when you're ready to you know serve the salad you can do the olive oil you know drizzle as as a small medium or large kind of thing or like you know low medium or high potency and then for just how much people are using because i because that that's another situation where it's really going to be hard to hard to manage in an infused uh dinner situation right all the the best ones that i've had so far any of the cannabis dinners have all come with uh transportation 
<laughs> and, and to me, that's that's the key to the whole thing. If you want to have a, everybody have a good time and really have a good time and you want to dose or get freaky with it, great. But make sure you got transportation for everyone and everybody um, knows that ahead of time. Then you can enjoy yourself and have a great time and you don't have to. Yeah, that's that's great advice. That is such great advice, you know, that and setting, really set and setting. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now you have uh, you have you have written how many books now? Uh, well, over my lifetime, eight books, you know, I'm, I have different levels of, uh, of, of, uh, um, respect for each of those books. You know, I have, I have two or three books that I really, really love, but actually I'm, I'm going to take that back. I only have one book. I'm not super proud of that grass is greener book because I didn't have as much editorial control as I would have liked. And oh. it sort of got published. Uh, I'll you take know, that off your playlist. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it still has valuable stuff that I think that the new book, the handbook for health or cannabis for health is a, uh, is a much better book. And then, all, and then, and then they're all companion cookbooks, you know, that go with that, like a dog cookbook and, you know, making smoothies, just ways that you can integrate uh, CBD or tinctures in with your, in with your life. Dude, you are so, you are one of the most well-rounded uh, educators that there are out there. You've covered everything from, what was the one I saw the other day about sex drive? And, uh, you know, I, yeah. I wasn't triggering that, although I did in a certain way, obviously, from, from uh, being your student. But, I mean, you're, you're hitting all of the boards on all cylinders. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's next for you? Oh, uh, I think I'm going to start doing more. Well, I'm definitely going to do more formulation and product development and being more product uh, forward with a few products that I really want to get behind and uh, continue to promote strains and strain specific work and uh, and continue to support home grow. I think that that's the uh, that's the future for at least the next little bit here. But I, I, I see all of these hemp derived concentrates, but particularly the D8 and THCO as products that will really help people to feel, you know, confident and secure with trying cannabis. What can you see a whole range of that? Or is it, I mean, out of all of these, would you put that right up there in the front row? Oh, yeah, I think that getting the THCO and the D8 out there to states where people can't where people don't have legal access, uh, or to places where people have legal access, but it's complicated, you know, they can still try something and learn and then uh, and then they'll be able to make additional like uh, a more educated decision. I mean, every time somebody takes a little D8 gummy and they feel better and they slept well and they didn't grow a third eyeball yeah. <laughs> or lose a finger, then they're just like, you know, this stuff works. And it didn't, it didn't bother me at all. And then they, they can get behind, they can just get the hype out of the way. And, and it can be a, more of a, of a true experience of what's really happening. There's so much stigma, so much persistent, stupid stigma that is just trying to keep the wealth concentrated where it's, where it is. And I mean, oh my goodness, let's face it. It's time to move the money around a little bit. I mean, it's time to move the money around a little bit. Um, so uh, I wanted to go back to THCO, uh, cause again, this is, for a lot of people, this is going to be one of the first times they even hear about THCO. Um, again, uh, THCP, as I understood it, um, in its basic form was uh, 30 times stronger than normal THC. And THCO is 300 times stronger. Yes. Yeah. But. Much more potent. Much more potent. So is it. Is it more dangerous for, I mean, can it get out of control? There, there is the potential for there to be more problems with it, more, more potential addiction, more potential side effects. So uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's binding more tightly, and, but it doesn't have like necessarily a particularly longer duration of activity. But, but it is more potent. And I mean, really by potency, what you're really just describing is, uh, is the amount that you need to take to get high. 
So that's where I think THCO may have some risk, but also some benefit, because if you're the right. kind of person who needs a lot of product to get high, then the THCO is one puff and you're done. But, uh, but you know, you, you have similar problems, like if you take a 200 milligram ibuprofen or a thousand milligrams of naproxen, it's like, wow, a thousand milligrams of naproxen, but it's actually the same amount as 200 right. milligrams, you know? So it just, it, different drugs have different potencies or, you you know, um, I mean, there's a million examples of those where where you have really similar products and the, the hundreds of milligrams are just because one drug, you just, you just need to have a little bit of a bigger pile of it before it starts to work rather than some drugs where you just need to touch. So, um, and so, so I think THCO is going to be a great product, a great add to the great add to the market. It definitely is a very stimulating, very psychedelic high and, uh, and, and, uh, people like it because you just don't need to take that much. Oh, I wish I could get some here in Portugal. I know. I wish you could too. These, uh, uh, these, these, uh, these hemp derived concentrates have a lot of potential. And I think their greatest potential is that they're going to get in to all of the little nooks and crannies around the country that are still holding out on, you know, on the, on, on legalization and get to people, you know, I mean, New Hampshire just failed to pass their legalization. They've got, I think 76% or 72% of the population that wants recreational cannabis and they, they can't get it passed, you know? So, so these people that can't access or don't want to get a medical card, then they can get the D8 and THCO and get some of the help that they need, uh, make themselves feel more confident with using it so that when it's finally time to use cannabis, they'll, uh, they'll have it. And THCO is available in all 50 states right now? Um, I, most states, there's a few states, I think three that have banned the sale of D8 and other hemp derived concentrates because they're really trying to protect their cannabis uh, lobbies and, and the cannabis, um, you know, the, the, uh, the cannabis, um, um, I mean, the cannabis uh, licenses, you okay. know, because people have spent so much money to get these licenses and then to just flood the market with D8 really, you know, takes the bottom out of those hundreds of millions of dollars that people paid, particularly in states like Florida. And so there's some of those states that are harder. But otherwise, you know, I mean, there it's it's available most everywhere. So it's worth uh, it's worth giving it a try if you haven't in your own state. In, in a lot of places, you can just get them at your smoke shop. Love it. Love it. Um, where do people, where do we send people to find out stuff about you? Oh, what's your what's what's your favorite network of choice at the moment? You know, I've been working a ton on TikTok, and so yes. that's a great place to go. But you can also look at uh, cbdandcannabisinfo.com. That's my old educational website, and that's available too. Um, I keep uh, all of my videos there, and they're all cataloged and easily searchable. Um, and then I also, you know, if you sign up for my newsletter at cbdandcannabisinfo.com, that's where I do all of my products. Product, uh, my product offers. Fantastic. And don't forget that you can also uh, sign up for her cannabis protocol course. I, I am a, I'm a proud graduate. And uh, I, again, thank you so much for all that you have taught me. And uh -huh. I hope that this goes out to a lot of people and more people get to discover you and, and your fabulous uh, video network that you've committed so much time and effort to. Thank you so much. Um, you are welcome, Dan. It's wonderful to be able to talk to you here and to be able to share this with everybody. I just want people to feel really confident that there's a product out there for what you're dealing with and that cannabis is safe and effective. Don't worry. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Oh, hey, welcome back, everyone. How about that interview, huh? What did I tell you? Look at all that stuff we learned. THCP and THCO. Dude, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go find me some THO right away. I'm ready. Oh, God, I suck at this game. All right, everyone. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And oh, wait, there is one more thing. Hit it.
everyone. It's Danny again. Just want to say thanks to Kat for having me on the show. I really appreciate being able to come on here and talk about some of the products that we carry in our dispensary. Uh, the first thing I actually want to talk about, it's going to be called Golden Goat. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you kind of get a little look at this real quick. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Beautiful nuggets, right? So cool story about Golden Goat, right? Golden Goat was actually an accident. It was created in Topeka, Kansas of all places. I know, mind blown, right? It's actually a cross between Hawaiian Romulan and Island Sweet Skunk. I've never tried either one of those, but this smells good, so it might be worth it. Um, this smells to me spicy, kind of tropical, a little fruity, just a little bit on the end. Great thing about this strain, um, in particular, it's great for stress. It's great for anxiety, pain, depression. A lot of chronic conditions would probably really benefit from the uplifting effects of this strain. Um, this is actually by a cultivator called um, Stability Growers in uh, Carrollton, Missouri. Uh, so definitely if you ever get out to Missouri and want to check something out, I highly recommend trying Golden Goat from Stability. Thanks. What's going on guys? My name is Josh from Planet 13. I just wanted to show off my favorite vape cart. It's going to be Chloe by Medicine. This cartridge makes me feel like the first time I ever smoked. Flavor pro profile is amazing. The terps are bomb. The high is great. Come down and pick it up at Planet. Hola amigos and amigas from all around the world. Our friend Captain Hooter has given me opportunity again to voice my opinions. So here we go, right? This is my review of Euphoria, which was spread by our friends from Dutch Passion. Why I chose to talk about this train is that I still stands out, even with all the genetics that have been introduced to us by the US market. The best way to describe this gem is to talk about the smell and the taste. I grew the strain organically and cured it around two months, so when the taste profile was smooth as silk and full of surprises, I knew I had found something beautiful. The first wave of vapor is like being in Hawaii, complex taste of sweetness and spices, and feeling of warmth comes over you, caressing you as it just melts away. The vapor is really smooth and thick, the smell remains more sweet and floral than spicy, while you can feel the different undertones dancing on your tongue. Definitely something that could be made as a concentrate and enjoyed for the terpenoids. Euphoria reminded me of old school skunks that I remember from late 90s. I miss the thick taste in my mouth and the overwhelming effect of old school skunk. It makes me smile just to think about it. If you're looking to grow something special or obtain a crowd pleaser, I would suggest to try out Euphoria by Dutch Passion, because the trifecta effect is something noteworthy. This is all from me today, love and support each other. And remember, herb is meant to be shared and enjoyed with good company. So pass your blunts, bongs or vaporizing and be thankful of what you enjoy. Somebody gave a lot of love for you to enjoy the bath you have. Peace. Thank you for listening. Okay, gang, that's it for real. Thanks for coming by today. Please leave your comments and your love and your likes and all of that and share it with everyone. And we'll see you next Wednesday with the brand new Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. God, can I hit one? Yes. No, I didn't get a point. Okay, I suck. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>